Hello, welcome back. In the last chapter, we began this module about financial forecasting. In the、uh, previous chapter, we look at forecasting for cash flow statements. In this chapter, we're gonna switch our gear and look at creating performance statements, particularly the income statement and the balance sheet. And in the main difference between this and cash flow forecast is in the time frame or the time duration. With cash flow forecasting, we focus on much shorter Shorter frequencies, and in performer statements, we are taking a longer view of the business.、Uh, forecasting、uh, and creating performer statements is one of the most important part for a business because this is about strategizing, it's about planning, and also, of course, performer statements is an integral part of any business plan. In this chapter, we're gonna focus on assumptions, and these are very important.、Um, this is where the real-world experience meets theory, and then、um, we'll have quite a few hands-on exercises to create performance income statements, balance sheet, and also statement of cash flow. And we'll be using Excel.、Um, Or a spreadsheet, or any spreadsheet software, but I will be, be using primary Excel to demonstrate how to create these statements. More importantly, is about strategizing and planning. So we'll also look at how to conduct scenario analysis to help us understand potential different strategies and alternatives. Once again. The key difference between cash flow forecasting and performance statement creation is the frequency. For performance statements, typically we look at a longer time horizon. Either you do quarterly forecasts or annual or yearly forecasts. The duration is also different. For performance statements, typically we'll plan out three to five years. Three years is the most common forecast horizon. For performing income statement, the principle is that you be built on sales forecast. The most important part in terms of concept is that when you create sales forecast, folk be realistic. This is the performance statements just to help you as the owner to look at what. Scenario may happen, and also make sure that your business is successful. So, if you are fooling around, your,、uh, fooling yourself in your sales forecast, you will be the only one who will get hurt. We want to incorporate as much information as possible, and it is hard to be objective. So one approach to help us to be objective is to check our assumptions against some kind of outside external benchmark, industry averages, national averages, main competitors. Those are all good sources to use as、um, as a check. For the other two statements,、um, most of the time、um, they are based upon they are built upon the performing income statement, but they also reflect your business strategy, particularly in terms of assets.、Uh, what do you plan to purchase? Also, your financing strategy. Are you going to borrow money, or are you going to focus mostly on、um, equity financing? The important part and the uh, um, challenge is that. We'll need to construct all three statements simultaneously. So we'll have to complete part of one statement and then work on another part of a different statement and then come back to finish the first statement. So this can be confusing for someone doing this for the first time. And we're gonna walk you through step by step how to do that. Lastly, it's important to consider multiple scenario. If there's one thing we know about business is that there's always Unknown, and there's always challenges and changes, and sometimes those changes are good. For example, your product may be wildly more successful than you anticipated, but do you have the financial resources to support the growth that you experience? So this is where scenario analysis comes in. Most financial planning and creating performance statements starts with sales forecast. We distinguish the process between an established business versus a new business. For an established business, we have a lot more historic information. For a new business, we don't have historic information, so we have to look. We have to make a lot more assumptions.、Uh, in this example, we're gonna look back at Tasty Taco.
we did a lot of the sales forecast back in ch the last chapter and we're gonna base our uh, analysis and our performance statement in this chapter using data that we already generated from before Remember from chapter seven that these are the assumptions that the owner has made regarding its sales. We look at the average check, we look at the number of turnover, and we, we have forecasted based on this information that is given to us in the last chapter, we computed the forecast for uh, each day of the week and then we come up with a weekly total. So here are the weekly total that we computed from chapter seven. When we do performance statements, the, frequent, uh, the time interval is different. Uh, when we do cash flow forecast, we do week by week forecast in, um, in many cases, particularly a small business like a restaurant. But when we are doing performance statements, the time horizon extends to uh, quarterly or annually. So in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert the weekly sales into monthly sales. So we assume that on average, there are 4.33 weeks per month. Um, so as you know, some weeks you have 30 days, some weeks you have 28 days, some weeks you have 31 days. So this is just an average. And the monthly projected sales is equal to the weekly projected sales times um, the number of weeks. So here is what our monthly projected for sales and drink sales is. And this is the peak. So this is the most that we assume we'll be able to generate each month. And as to be expected, um, the each month may not be the same. So the assumption here uh, based on this is uh, the any everything that's um, denoted in green is provided to us. Um, so the assumption is that the peak months is in July and August. This is the busiest month of the year. And then um, September start to go down a little bit. Uh, December, because of the holidays, you also have a pretty high amount of sales. But then January, February, and March are the lowest month. So we build our forecast based on the maximum. So the projected monthly is simply um, what you have computed as the um, maximum times your current um, assumed level. Um, the same thing for drinks. And total will be the sum of drinks and foot sales. So that would be for the month of January. So we do monthly forecast and then we can just copy what we have created to the rest of the, the year. And the annual total is the sum of the entire a year. So based on our weekly projection, we convert that to our monthly total, and then we make assumptions about uh, the seasonality of the business. We come up with an annual forecast. So this is our uh, first year. So remember, this is a new business. So this is the first year. Um, this is our projection. So our revenue in year one is what we have projected. Revenue for drink, is also what we have projected. And our total revenue is just the sum of these two. Next, we have to um, estimate over the next two years. Remember financial planning, we have a three-year projection. So again, we have to make an assumption. The assumption here is that the, comp the business will grow by 10%. And in the first in year two, and then you'll grow by 7% in year three. So here are our projections for a new business. So again, uh, we already did a lot of work in chapter seven. If we haven't done that, we'll have to do all that um, as well. Next, we're gonna look at sales forecast for an existing business. 
The existing business in this case is a company called Peace Blossom. For an existing business, we take advantage of information that we have. So here are the uh, historic sales. This is sales two years ago, last year, and the most recent sales. So for here, what we want to do is to compute the growth rate. So growth rate is um, new minus O divided by O. There are two ways to do that. Uh, or you can take uh, new divided by O minus one. Um, so new in this case, we will be last uh, year T minus one divided by T minus two minus one. That's the growth rate. And we can do that for um, all the components. So that's just a simple copy. So we see that uh, growth, the historic growth rate for cash sales um, was 2.98% and then goes down to 2.71%. Uh, credit card sales was 7.1% and then it went down to 6.5%. Uh, but sales on customer credit went from 8% to 12%. So that tells us what our customer uh, what the historic uh, growth has been for the business. So based on the historic rate, the company can then make estimates about the future. So here are the estimates that the company, the owner deci uh, uh, decided on. Um, this is a combination of what the owner know, given uh, her knowledge of the business, as well as looking at the historic past. So these numbers include historic information as well as the intention of the owner. So the owner's intention is to um, increase sales to customers on credit. They, the owner wants to build business customers. Uh, it also wants to increase credit card sales. Um, the trend for customers using cash is much lower. And there's also study that show that people tend to spend more money when they're using credit card than when they're using sales. So the growth rate that is, um, that is determined by the owner include both historic information and the future marketing um, strategy of the business. When you create a, fin uh, a performance statement, you're actually building a financial model. So there's some programming or modeling basics that is important to create a uh, performance statement that is easy to maintain, minimizes mistakes, and also easy to share with others. First and very important, make your assumptions very clear in your model. So make them explicit. Do not bury your assumptions inside equations. So your, your assumptions should be in a separate area, highlighted, clearly labeled, so that anyone looking at your financial uh, performance statements will know exactly what assumptions lie behind your uh, those models. The model themselves is relatively uh, straightforward. So the model are the structure of the financial statements. What that means is uh, you will need to know the, uh, the structure of the various financial statements. And we discussed those and the formulas for those are uh, introduced in earlier chapters. So they will not be rep repeated in chapter eight, but look back uh, when we talk about financial statements. So how do you compute gross profit? How do you compute net income? What, uh, what, consti what constitutes current assets? What constitutes current liabilities? So all those are the information that is the structure or your, of your financial statement. So, so in terms of the financial model, we already learned all that. What we have to do is translate those into formulas in this chapter. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the financial model should be flexible, meaning that you want to take into account any potential um, things that may happen in the future. For example, your company may, your new business may not be paying dividends today, but you want to include dividend as a line item in your financial statement and you, in your model so that in one of the scenarios or in the future, you will pay dividends and that can be, in, your model will already be able to handle that. So that's what we mean by flexible. Create your model to take into account 
all for all possibilities so that when you introduce um, dividends or when you take out a loan and you have interest and principal repayment, you can easily include that in your model. Another thing that is that is useful in a model is to highlight the, the variables that is important for the entrepreneur. Um, a lot of times when we are doing financial planning, uh, the most important variables in addition to net income, obviously, is um, cash flows. You know, what are the cash balances? In fact, a lot of times even more important than net income are net, ca net cash flows at the end of each year and cash balances at the end of each year. As a small business, sometimes, particularly a startup business, you may have low income in the beginning, but if you don't have enough cash to uh, sustain your business, you, you, may, you may run into obstacles before your business have a chance to be successful. And that leads to risk and uncertainty. So how do we model that? To do that, we use um, scenario analysis. We take into account sensitivity analysis, uh, break-even analysis. So the major differences between this type of analysis are that for scenario analysis, typically you look at a large number of variables in a select number of scenarios. So oftentimes people look at the best case, the worst case, the most likely case. And you may have to come up with assumptions for 10, 20 variables under each of those scenarios. Sensitivity analysis, in contrast, tend to focus on one or two variables. And these tend to be key variables in your assumptions. And you focus on the impact of those one or two variables on your bottom line, so for all your decision variable. For example, you may want to look at um, change in sales growth. So how much would sell, if sales growth change by say half a percent, one percent, two percent, how would that impact your cash flow or your net income? So sensitivity analysis, look at one or two single variable and then look at many values that that particular variable may take. And then lastly is break-even analysis. And in accounting, we oftentimes talk about break-even quantity for um, for cost. So this is how, mu how many units do you have to sell to cover variable costs, for example. In finance, we oftentimes also look at net present value break-even. So how what what go? So again, this can be sales quantity, it can be revenue, it can be dollar amount. What level of sales do you have to achieve in order for you to have um, to have a positive uh, a zero net present value project? In addition to sales, it can be growth rate. It can be any item. But in terms of pre-given analysis, you typically look at one variable and see what what value does that single variable have to achieve in order to, to uh, obtain break-even. And the key to become good at financial modeling is through practice, practice, practice. In this chapter, we're gonna look at two statements. One is for an existing business, and that is the, uh, we will go, you will complete an assignment that has to create the performance statements for Peace Blossom. A second assignment, um, is to construct the performance statements for Tasty Tackle, which is a new business. So you get a chance to see um, two approach. One is for an existing business where you have a lot of historic information to draw upon, and the other is for a new business. We'll conclude this video here. I'll see you next in each of these assignments.